Hey, real quick, just want to say thanks so much for clicking on this video. Really appreciate everyone who watches these podcasts. I haven't posted in the last five months. Going to change that coming into 2022. Looking to absolutely kill it in the new year. You're not going to be able to hear my volume that well on this video. I'm about to buy a microphone, so that's going to be solved for the future videos. It doesn't really matter because Oren, my guest, he's the one dropping all the value and all the knowledge. So I really hope you enjoy the video. If you do, like it. Leave a comment if there's something that you found interesting. Subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. I'm Oren, 22, uh, nanoscience graduate from Trinity College, Dublin. I'm currently working in the college as our sports and physical activity officer with our students union and the sports department. Um, that's me at the minute, but up until now, I suppose I've had a, had a range of things going on in my life. Um, everything from being director of the European New Parliament to working as an Irish language radio presenter, um, sports writer, um, I've done it all. Um, love the love that you got the grail game there as well. It's uh, it's something I'm I'm passionate about for sure. Um, yeah, uh, probably one of my my defining traits is that uh, I don't really know how to say no to an opportunity, and it's it's why I kind of end up in such a a broad range of tasks. But um, yeah, sports sports and education would be where I am at the minute. Well, it sounds like you've been doing some bits over there since I've been gone. Absolutely, um, it's it's great. It's kind of where I'm at at the minute now is uh, it's like a new a new beginning. We're kind of we're kind of coming slowly out of um, out of a bit of a lockdown over here. So it's it's trying to just encourage people to get active again. Um, so you are seeing a different mindset, I suppose. That you kind of just have to to work with and mold and kind of strike while the iron's hot. Um, people in one way or another, I think if you want to see any kind of blessing in disguise over what's gone on in the world over the last two years, is that I think people are slowly starting to be more conscious of, you know, their, um, be it their physical fitness or, or, you know, the, the psychological benefits that come with it. Um, some people kind of got really down with, with all that went on, but others, it kind of, it gave them that new motivation to, to kind of add that extra dimension to, to what they do. So my work now, and I'm based in Trinity College, working with our, our students union and our sports department is, basically just looking at outreach and sports and getting people involved who kind of wouldn't usually be involved in sport um, kind of highlighting the benefits of that to them, how it can really shape um, shape their mindset coming into other things as well, into their academics, how it can be a more positive way to spend their downtime um, and really just kind of hitting home with that synergy that that sport in conjunction with, with your studies can propel you to kind of unforeseen success you know it's it all works hand in hand and I suppose a lot of the time you see those who are most successful will be those who have the most packed schedules but it's it's the fact that they have these these two things going hand in hand they have their academics they have their sport but they know how to work the two of them um they would know how to work them perfectly hand in hand and that's what that's what kind of molds a, a successful individual very good and um, do you guys focus on promoting any particular type of activity like is it resistance training in the gym, running, just getting involved in some sort of social sport or, or what is it? Yeah, so it's 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 definitely, it's a bit of everything. Um, so probably the easiest way to kind of encourage people initially is, it's just, we say, is to get people moving. So a lot of what we're doing is kind of putting out even things as basic as step challenges, um, you know, getting people <clears throat> up off their desk. Um, that's kind of generally what's seen as like the initial way to get into it um as opposed to kind of joining sports clubs tends to be that bit more intimidating for people um but as you said as well i think even things like you know resistance training which is something i'd be hugely kind of passionate about people always see it as a maybe a, a bridge too far to cross so yeah it's 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 a difficult one but likewise as, as i was saying some of the events that we do are centered on people getting their first kind of foot into the sports center on campus um you know, it might just be having an event or a talk or something located in the sports centre. So they enter that environment and then they see, well, look, you put the first foot in the door. Um, the second step is that that bit easier. Um, for me personally, I think, um, you know, I'm I'm doing my own personal training and qualifications at the minute, be fully qualified after Christmas. I understand the benefits of, of resistance training in, in one's life. And I think that it's something everyone should be doing and um, they genuinely should be for their health. Um, 
So even looking into the semester after Christmas now, it's definitely something I want to focus on um, to see whether we can kind of increase the uptake in, in resistance training. Um, and again, uh, it doesn't have to be getting people into the gym. It can be calisthenics, body weight stuff and that kind of thing. But um, it's, you know, it's, it's the perfect way to kind of upkeep your whole musculoskeletal system while also, you know, eliciting some of the, the best benefits psychologically. So it's, it's a bit of everything, but it's always easier to start at the, uh, the first rung of the ladder. Absolutely. And a lot of the common objections to exercise is people who say they've got a really, really big, as you said, really packed schedule. Maybe they don't feel they have the time to go to the gym or to do any form of exercise. What, personally, I think that's bullshit, but what advice do you have? I assume that if you're dealing with people and you're trying to get people involved in fitness, that is a common excuse yeah. that you hear what's your reaction to people who say that um my reaction is from listening and and working now in, env in an environment with some of the um the best uh strength and conditioning coaches in the game is that you know realistically if your session's over 45 minutes it's too long um and that's that's genuinely it now there's there's diminishing returns after that so if you're looking at resistance training for example um realistically three 45 minute sessions a week um you know and this isn't like the the clickbait hack to personal training but three 45 minute sessions a week is is a baseline that's going to get your results um if you can't commit to three 45 minute sessions a week for something so important as you know improving your entire physical and mental health then what can you commit to you know um you can commit to your academics for much longer and obviously maybe there's there's more time that needs to go into it but i think it says something about your underlying drive if you can't do that and that's not to say that you're not motivated but it means maybe that there are questions that that you need to ask yourself um and obviously that's not something everyone can do um that's not everything um you know you, you can't always look at motivation being a problem and say you know you're not motivated there's there's obviously there's ways around that but i think if you really have a goal in mind um and it's just time then it's just it's just about laying the truth down and i think a lot of people do have this this underlying kind of misconception that you do need to maybe work harder or i think there is a lack of education or awareness in general around you know sports and exercise i think it's taught poorly in schools even the basics um living a healthy lifestyle is a lot easier and i think people overcomplicate it and i think social media probably further overcomplicates it um that's that's an entirely different question but if someone came to me um and said that i'd you know you, you just have to lay it straight isn't it um it's the same with, with every fitness goal it's it's not easy but it is simple um that's that's the big thing uh the theory behind it anyway is is quite straightforward um and if you're able to make a few changes um which a lot of people are um maybe some people need a bit more help but if you are able to plan effectively um then you can do it quite easy <laughs> yeah i really like that point you made about schools I remember when i was growing up i was always fascinated at how there was so much attention put on academics and i think Academics have their place, but such a little. I don't know how it was at your school, but both in primary and secondary school for me, PE was seen as something that was part of the schedule, but we're talking once, max, twice per week. And it would be almost used as this. I don't know how to describe it, but it's where if the class misbehaved, PE was seen as like this luxury. As yeah. this like break or whatever, as this thing that you get if you behave well, and if the class was bold or whatever, then the PE would be sacrificed. Yeah. So, what is, is your goal with this? Are you trying to change people? So obviously you're working in a third level institution, so you're trying to get them involved. But are you doing anything as well to try and incorporate a a more strategic exercise program into the primary and secondary levels as well? Yeah, um, great question. Great question. Um, so at the minute, my work is is obviously primarily with the with 
third level sector um you know i'm i'm in an, an internship position at the minute with with a third level institution but we're working to kind of maximize our, our impact. So look, we work with a number of, of local secondary schools um, within inner city Dublin, Western Row, CBS being one of them, where we try to extend that impact. Um, probably primary school is, um, is something that we're not hitting at the minute. And that's something that is probably a cause of, of frustration because as you said, it's, you know, it's, it's that attitude that you kind of cement into, into kids' heads growing up. Um, that's, that's a problem. Um, and I, I can totally agree with and relate to that, that, um, you know, P is seen as something that's, you know, entirely kind of ancillary, you know, it's, it's something that happens on the periphery and, you know, if, if you have time to do it, you do it. And if not, then it's the one that takes the hit and, you know, you can be kind of punished by having it removed and, and that, that sets it aside as being something that's discretionary, um, and it should be. And, you know, I think people don't learn the importance of leave, leading an active life. People don't learn the basics of nutrition. And again, that's not something that should be overcomplicated, especially for kids. But it's something that that's missing kind of almost entirely off the curriculum. Um, I think a lot of PE teachers, um, you know, maybe at, at that level, don't take the job maybe as seriously as they should and not to be kind of making a sweeping statement. But um and this isn't this doesn't just go for PE, but I think with teachers in general, um, you have such a a weight of responsibility on your shoulders for really, you know, not just instilling knowledge, but you know, motivating your students going forward in life. Um, you know, you always kind of rem remember back to your school days. Um, you'll remember a teacher that's great, and you'll remember a teacher that wasn't so great, perhaps for the wrong reasons. Um, and that that goes with PE as well. Um. And it's, it's about doing it right. Look, at, at a certain age, you're obviously not going to want to make things over competitive. You don't want to, you know, create a, a toxic environment. You want to, it's all about participation. Um, and even, even a third level uh, participation is something that we, that we preach. But I think at, even from, you know, ages four and five, I think kids can get lost in, um, you know, this kind of trap of, of competition, um, of selection and, if that's not done right, you know, you lose, you lose an entire generation of people who, and I'm not going to say future athletes, but I would say people who, who would have the potential of leading a better and healthier life than they do. Um, that element of competition, it's, it's, a it's a difficult one to manage, but, you know, if you make kids feel like they're not, you know, worth fielding in a, in a team at age five, there is, there's no chance that they're, um, they're going to ever kind of go anywhere in sports and and that kind of happened through a primary school um and look it's it's something that i i might touch on later with you but to kind of throw it in there um you know from a personal experience i kind of had that as well um i had my own kind of um problems with uh, a later diagnosed uh, like growth hormone deficiency i was kind of quite small um lacked any level of kind of physical prowess in primary school and um you know i just lay in a straight you kind of find yourself often being the one maybe kind of left to the side when it came to um to sports or physical activity because at that age you know it's, it's easier to go with those who were kind of stronger faster initially um and if you don't take care of those who who might be kind of delayed in that developmental pathway then you're going to lose them um Whereas good, good coaching practice, and again, you know, you might be overcomplicating it for, for PE, but good coaching practice is to, to focus on fun, participation and fun um, at that level. If you even look at the top sports academies for Premier League clubs, when they get players in, you know, at, at nine years old, you know, they're not, they're not pitching them um, against each other in, in a way where it's dog eat dog. They're actually preaching competition. Um, so at the minute, there's a, a, a lecture in, so I'm doing my strength and conditioning course in, in Satanta College and our, our head of academics, Des Ryan, um, is former head of sports medicine at, at Arsenal's Academy. Um, what he always says is at, at, that, at that age, it's not about competition. It's, it's about basic skills. It's about fun. Um, he would even say in, 
in his academy over in the UK, he'd have them playing Gaelic football, you know, and rugby to introduce those kind of, you know, as, as a bit of fun, number one, but to introduce these um, these different movement patterns, these different skills. And again, you know, some some people might have the mindset that it's, it's about focusing on, you know, getting them to be the best at, at one particular activity from the start. But um, it's it's not. It's it's about instilling that that love for the sport. Um, and that goes for any level of or any type of physical activity. It's um, it's participation. It's fun. And, you know, the, the rest kind of comes later on in life. Yeah, it's an interesting point you make about competition. So do you think that competition should be reduced at the early level, should be taken away, or, or, or what amount of competition is healthy for kids who are just starting out in sport? Because I think that, look, if it's based purely on competition and no fun, then yeah, that might be a bit toxic at that age. But I think that that can instill in them a good work ethic and they can recognize, okay, maybe I'm, maybe, yeah, because they're young, it might be a little bit different. But I think for the ones who are really hungry, because you can have you can have hunger at any age. I think for the ones who really, really want to achieve, that element of competition can be helpful for them to try and get better, get as good as they can get, and and improve as as the years go on. Um, because there are athletes who, I'll use Michael Jordan as an example, who was cut from his high school basketball team. Now, obviously, this is this is an older age, but you know the point is when he was a kid, wasn't as good, worked on his game, and then he became the goat. Uh, that's obviously an extreme example, but I just want to know your opinion on on where, what is the correct amount of, of competition, and should it at, at what point, at what age, should it become more about competitiveness rather than fun? Yeah, no, great point. Um... And you're right. Look, it's it's sport by its very nature is is competitive, um, and that's not something you can take away in its entirety. Um, for me, it's it's about opportunity, um, and it's the same with with anything in life, in you know sports or education or you know any any sort of industry, entertainment, music, arts. Um, if you don't give someone the opportunity, they're never going to get the chance to shine. Um, and that's and it's the same with sports. So I think it's not to it's not to eliminate competition, but it's to make sure that there's access, um, and that there there aren't people who wouldn't be left behind with nothing. Um, and you know, to use an extreme example, um, you know, I can remember we had a and this is go to show uh, the kind of primary school environment I was in, but we had a, a cricket coach come in, and at one point, you know, we had a cricket team. Um, not that cricket would be my favorite sport by any means, but you know, we had a, a limited number of uh, of places for people to kind of play in this. We played a few matches, but you know, I can remember at the time not getting picked for one. Um, when an opportunity arose um, for rotation, it didn't happen, and that's not to you know, it's, it's not that I'm talking kind of out of spite, but that's me saying right now that at the time. Well, I was never going to be a cricketer, <laughs> you know, and that's uh, it's an extreme example. But, you know, the, the opportunity wasn't given, um, you know, and there can't always be room to have two teams. But at that level, an, an amount of rotation is probably ideal um, and obviously not to take opportunities away from those, as you said, who are who are kind of looking to, to push to be the best. But, you know, if there's if there's not a step in the door for anyone, um, what can you do, you know, Um so it's it's about it's about creating opportunities. Um, and look, whether it's schools or sports clubs, um, obviously they need to be better resourced to do that. Um, where I am at the, at the third level now, we probably have a bit more funding to do it. So that's why we're we really are kind of looking for our sports clubs within the college to, you know, create more teams, be it in a you know a probably a less competitive or less high end kind of stream or pathway but you know we're at the minute we're kind of looking to, to totally reshape to rebrand our, our whole kind of performance and recreation stream so that we have an adequate structure in place for teams to be at suitable levels um again um and that's just to to get people in the door
Hey, Oren, sorry, it got blocked there for a second. Yeah, no worries. Go ahead. Yeah, so, um, yeah, basically, it's it's just, it's creating opportunity. Um, so co competition can still take place. Um, so you can still have those who, who want to push to the top and you can still have a top. You can still have a level for the best, but you want to have a level for everyone. Um, and that's, that's give people that, you know, that, that platform to start on. Um, because if you don't have that platform, you know, you're never going to get anywhere. And, and some, some people just need that, that step up. Um, I definitely would have classed myself as one of them. Um, because, you know, I'm, I'm at a point now in my life where I think I have an amount of resilience. I think I can deal with competition, but at that stage, certainly not. Um, and and it's interesting what you touched on as well about that kind of age as, as to where competition becomes more important or uh, when when you start to focus more on it. Um, probably beyond the scope of my qualification to tell you where. Um, I'm sure there's more uh, kind of educational psychology studies done onto this, but people develop differently. Um, from an, an anecdotal and, and personal perspective, I think I probably wouldn't have come into my own until I was probably 15, 15 or 16 before I really felt confident um, and felt like I was at a level where I could really kind of push myself and um, be self-driven, self-motivated and, and kind of know what I want, be confident to, to kind of, to a degree, know my own value. Although that's something I think we all struggle with. Um, so it depends. It's, it's, it's a tricky one, especially dealing with kind of youth development and, um, be it education, sport, um, psychological, uh, everyone's different. Um, so it's, it's a tough balance, but again, it's, it's the opportunity to be there for everyone is, is the main thing. So that's, that's all resourcing. Um, and I think to a, a broader extent that that means that, you know, the, um, the government, the department of education, department of sports needs to, you know, be given maybe more of an, of an emphasis, um, you know, be given, greater resources to to kind of create these opportunities. Exactly. I totally agree. I totally agree. And with your journey with fitness specifically, like when when did you start getting involved in, in the fitness industry? Yeah. So I'd say well in the past the past year is when I've um, I've started to to kind of qualify as as a strength and conditioning coach and, and personal trainer myself. But when I really kind of, you know, got into fitness, as, as you might say, was my first year in, in university. Um, and that was probably off the back of, of a, a rough enough time personally for me. Um, and, you know, I've, I've probably told the story a, a little bit before, uh, you know, we posted on Instagram briefly about things like this, but, um, you know, there was a difficult kind of point in my personal life um, where, where things kind of didn't work out. And I, I turned to fitness and um, it was something that I had considered for a while. Um, this was probably the, the kind of push to, to really push me into the gym, you know, to, to kind of take that first step. Um, in hindsight, I wouldn't recommend anyone to, to start because of, um, you know, a, a trauma or, or a difficult point in their life. I think that's the wrong place to start. Um, and it was the wrong attitude to start with, but, you know, maybe wrong scenario, but at the right time, um, because it kind of took off from there. Um, there, was a, there was a number of things um, that I wasn't happy about with myself. Um, and as a result of, of my situation at the time, I kind of felt a bit dejected. I felt down on myself, maybe not, not worthy in, in a number of different ways. Um, but one of them was, was definitely, um, you know, my, my own kind of physical appearance, um, which, you know, should not say anything about you as a person. Um, but, but that's, that was the, the, the driving factor um, at the time. And it's what, it's what pushed me into taking that first step. Um, I learned very quickly that there was much more to it than that. Um, and, and there was the benefits that came with it were, 
you know, multi-dimensional um, and very soon saw that it was, it's much more about the, you know, the means of, of pushing yourself to better yourself um, as, as kind of training in the gym kind of does. But um, that's when I started. So I was, what, 19 at the time, I think. Um, and I started out in, you know, in the college gym, um, went for personal training there and kind of very quickly formed, formed a really good relationship with some of the, uh, the fitness team in there who I now work with, which I think it's, it's nice for me to kind of come full circle in, in that sense. Um, definitely from, from the place where I was there to, to working in a job that promotes fitness among students. I think doing that within four years um, for me feels like a, a huge achievement, uh, you know, um, to kind of really turn the tables where I'm now the ones, the one trying to get people involved and to get people to take that first step that I was too afraid to take at the time. Um, so yeah, when I was 19, I never kind of, never been in that gym environment before, um, had played sports, you know, all through childhood, but, you know, was probably at, at the receiving end of, um, you know, maybe comments from others about not being physically up to scratch. I think, you know, I'd never have, have questions, you know, I played Gaelic football, I played soccer, ne- would never questions technical ability too much. I thought, you know, I was, was good on the ball, but was, um, you know, probably, probably weaker, slower than they should have been. Um, there was, you know, a number of, of underlying, underlying kind of biological kind of issues with that. Um, you know, I was diagnosed with growth hormone deficiency when I was 14 and, and went on daily kind of uh, injection treatment for that, which, which definitely helped. But there was, there was room left in the tank for me to, to push myself further. Um, so part of it came out of this kind of spike for the fact that I knew I had, uh, you know, this, this endocrinological condition. Uh, I knew that I had a biological limitation that was no fault of my own. But if, if anything, that pushed me to say, you know, screw it, man. Um, I'm not going to let this define me. I'm not going to let this be uh, a reason to have an excuse. Um, and after that point, I, I kind of gave everything into looking, you know, be it doing my own research or, you know, getting in contact with coaches as to how to to push my body and my mind to be the best it can be. Because learning about that, that development pathway and, and knowing how you can get yourself further, that just, man, that drew me, uh, that that drew me in and it, it drove me to becoming that best version of myself. And it, it just kind of took off from there. Um, you know, at the start, there was a few kind of bumps in the road, I guess, um, initially coming into it. Um, maybe there was some kind of stress that came with, with going to the gym. I think people find that you know, they can get kind of sucked into being too restrictive with um, with their regimes. You know, if they miss a gym session, they punish themselves. If they're not eating right, they, they punish themselves. Um, I, you know, have a diagnosis of, uh, you know, OCD, clinical uh, clinical OCD. So I, for me, I find it very hard to, to deviate from a plan. And, and when it goes wrong, um, it can go wrong. Um, so there's probably elements of... Uh, orthorexia there at the start which is you know a condition where it's it's linked to obsessive ex- exercising and obsessive healthy eating um and that in itself can be can be a limiting factor um so yeah once once those kind of creases were ironed out at the start it um that's where things really kind of kicked off um and for me it was it was my saving grace through my college years because I found a lot of, of other aspects of it quite difficult. I found, you know, academics were, were challenging. Um, I loved the subject that I studied, but it was intense. And I found that, that environment quite difficult to cope with at times. So having that there as an outlet um, to focus on my own fitness journey was, was a savior for me. It really was. Um, and that's what led me to, you know, once I, once I finished with college to, you know, go and go and qualify as a, as a PT and coach myself. Um, and I couldn't say for sure where I want to, you know, where I want to end up, but it's something that at some point in my life, I want to practice. I want to, I want to take someone who was in my position and I want to get them out of there and, you know, 
show them the the benefits that can come with with really um you know living that fitness lifestyle if you will um but living it right you know yeah totally get you man and uh, i saw that that pick with you and, and rob listed last year you're looking in phenomenal shape so uh it, it's clearly it's clearly the dedication is clearly been working for you what what i know you said just at the end there that you want to you've co- obviously you've come full circle and you want to be that person who gets people who were in your position when you were starting and you want to be the person who gets them into the into the habit of, of committing to fitness and, and improving their physique and improving their life as well what would your what would your advice be to that person so say someone who's for example just starting college have never really done any type of regular exercise routine in their life they might be unhappy with their body image and they really really want to change it but they might feel a bit overwhelmed intimidated they go into a gym and they see people who've been there for years what's some good first steps that they can take to to get involved yeah um yeah definitely uh it's it'd be hard to narrow it down to one but um yeah. i mean it kind oh, of, it I, to be one. yeah a, a cliche would be that um you know no one no one cares about what you're doing in there um and in, in that sense, it's that no one's looking at what you're doing. Um, everyone's focused on themselves. And within your first few sessions in the gym, you kind of, you find yourself realizing that yourself. You're not looking at who the next, you know, gym noob coming in the door is. You know, you're already just in there. You're working on yourself. Um, if you can, go with a friend. Um, contact a coach. Um, don't, don't do it yourself. Uh, you know, you're, you're giving yourself too much hard work to do. Um, and that's not to say that you can't do it. It's just to say that um, I think that the fitness industry, um, despite the bad rap that it gets, um, and definitely among maybe bigger personalities on on social media, I think at, at that kind of um, more tangible ground level scale, uh, it's quite an encouraging place. I think you find that the gym is an environment of collaborative encouragement and um, people wanting the betterment of everyone else there um, you find that whether it's you know pts whether it's those who are more experienced in the gym if they're going to talk to you they're going to help you you know they're they're not going to come and tell you that you're doing things wrong or if they do it's it's they're coming to tell you how to do things right you know um, and that's what i found i I was probably surprised by it, but some of the best friends I made from from university were those I made purely from going to the gym. Um, there were those who are probably more experienced than me who kind of nearly took me under their wing in a sense that, you know, some of them are co-workers now. Um, you know, others are just still friends of mine who are around the university or not, but um, they're some of the closest friends I have. And it's it's that realization that that once you're in there, People want to see you, people want to see you succeed. People want to see you achieve. Um, and I see it now myself. Um, you know, probably on a, on a less one to one level. But I see people come in, and you know, in the role that I'm in, you see them every week, and you can see the improvements. Um, probably easier for me to see physically, but I've no doubt that the fact that they're in week in week out means that they've they've really grown and really kind of um, nurtured a love for exercise and you know once you talk to those kind of people you can you can see the uh, their face kind of lights up when you when you talk to them about the gym and it's because it gives them that environment where it's you know it's them against themselves and and that's the easiest place to to learn about yourself and um, to learn to appreciate yourself and um, to identify your weaknesses, but more than that, to to know your strengths, um, and that's that's the gym puts that under a, under a spotlight for anyone. Um, you know, you, you learn to see your your body as you know not a not as a as a burden, but as this machine that you can you can hone, you can use, you can appreciate. Um, you know, it's it's not something to hate. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's something that you can, you know, you can identify and you can discover maybe 
you know, strengths that you never knew you had before. And that's, that's all something that comes from a gym environment and, and that's translatable um, professionally, personally, academically. Um, there, is, there is no one in this world that wouldn't benefit from, from having such an experience. Yeah, I totally agree. I think the discipline and the grit that you learn from being in the gym that you are forcing on yourself every time you go in and do a session, I think that that can be applied across the board in your life. And you know, that's no secret. I think everybody, everybody who's in the gym, who's doing, not even in the gym, but who's doing regular strenuous exercise, they are doing likely doing well in other areas of their life as well because they're applying that same discipline across the board. And what do you think about motivation? Because there's a lot of people who get involved in the gym and they're really enthusiastic and they take it very seriously. And then a few months go by, maybe four or five months, and they're not seeing the results that they thought, uh, even though they're putting in such hard work, however many days a week, three, four, five days a week. And then they become disheartened and they think, you know, I'm, is this even worth my time? What do you say to people who either are, are just struggling to find the motivation to keep going or who aren't getting the results and are thinking about just quitting because it's not, the, the juice isn't worth the squeeze, so to say? Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, you know, first thing I say about motivation is that we, we all lack it at times. Um, even as, as someone who's a, as a coach um, or, you know, preaching fitness, you know, we would have times where we don't have motivation as well. So it's, it's about knowing where to turn and, and what to identify when you aren't motivated. Um, there are, you know, there are tactics to, to overcome that. Um, you know, a, a lot of coaches will preach, you know, focus on, you know, maybe the first 30 seconds of what you're doing or the first minute. So when you go into the gym, you're not thinking about your session. You're thinking about the first minute. And once you've gone in, once you've done your first minute, when well, you're in there and you're already, you know, by, by default and by virtue of being there, you are motivated because, you know, you've got yourself up out of bed, you've got yourself in the door and you're there. And that's, that's one tactic you can use is to focus on smaller goals. Works with some, it, do, it doesn't work for everyone. But as, you know, as regards to, to goals and achieving them or not I think it's you know it's about identifying reasonable goals and it's about identifying what you have achieved and really doing some some level of introspection for what you have achieved um because a lot of a lot of people will turn around and say well look I haven't lost 20 pounds or you know I haven't gained 10 pounds of muscle or or whatever it is and and those goals will always be slow but look at yourself look at your attitude towards other aspects of your life. Look at the enjoyment you've had. Um, look at the friends you've made. Look at the the kind of positivity that it adds to your day being in the gym. Um, have you gotten stronger? Um, maybe you haven't, you know, gained as much muscle or, or lost as much fat as you wanted, but are you better at the exercises you're doing? Can you lift more? Or even if you're not lifting more, can you lift better? Um, can you move better? Can you run faster? or is your technique better? Um, and that in itself is a, is a huge thing. Um, we always, as, as S&C coaches, we focus on the first phase of anyone's training being, you know, called purely uh, anatomical adaption. And this isn't where you are going to see huge gains, but this is where you're preparing your body for what's to come. This is where you're learning new techniques, new patterns, you're preparing your body for further gains. So this is always going to be an, you know, a phase that that you'll enter at, at any, you know, at any kind of onset of a training cycle. Um, for those who are newer to a gym um, or newer to any level of resistance training, they'll see results quicker. They tend to. Um, and, you know, that's that's a, an initial kind of biomechanical adaption that that someone's body goes through when you when you give it that initial kind of stimulus that has not had before um it's usually after that point that people tend to plateau um but again it's it's about identifying you know maybe smaller less initially tangible goals but i think 
those who are more experienced in, in sports and fitness tend to be better at seeing them. Um, maybe those who aren't will kind of struggle, but look, it's, it's as much about, you know, your, your skills and your movements as it is about, you know, achieving numbers on a scale, which, you know, I, for one, I'm not a fan of. Um, so yeah, it's sometimes maybe you, you do need, you know, a friend or a coach or, or someone else to kind of, to kind of hit that home. Um, and, you know, if, if you can't do it yourself, maybe you need someone to hold that mirror up to you. But, you know, I, I don't think there's, there's any harm in not seeing any tangible physical goals in that period of time, providing you're training right. And if you're not, then it, it might be just, a you know, something as simple as maybe getting in touch with someone who, um, who can help you. Um, generally, if you are working with a coach, then things will be under control. Um, and if not, then maybe it might be worth contacting someone um, to tell you how to do it right. Um, but definitely reach out and seek help before giving up on your journey altogether. Um, fitness as much as a, as a kind of individual um, and, you know, nearly kind of spiritual thing that it is or that it can be seen to be where it's you against the yourself and, and you and yourself against the world. Uh, you can always turn to someone else um, if things aren't going right and be it reaching out to someone online, someone in your gym or, or a friend who might know more. That's, that's definitely the, the step to take before giving up. Yeah, great point. I remember as well, at the start of the quarantine back in March 2020, you put up a, a home, I think it was a calisthenics workout. It was, yeah. Um, I'm not on Instagram anymore, so I don't know if you've done any more of those. Is I thought it was very informative. Um, and it's great that you videoed it and put it all together. Is that something that you consider in the future? Now, as I said, I don't know if you, if you ventured down that route more but is that something you consider making posts on social media whether it be instagram tiktok facebook youtube about fitness and nutrition and, and the mindset for for fitness as well is that something that you you venture down in the future yeah absolutely um and it's something at this stage i kind of have no no shame in saying it's it's always it's difficult one to take at the start you know you feel like you start to preach this kind of stuff that you'd um you're going to get immediately ridiculed um which can happen and you know maybe as as i push forward will inevitably happen i guess um i haven't ventured too deep into it just yet but i think that you know doing that kind of homework i think at the start of uh the start of lockdown was was a great start um you know we uh, we checked the analytics and I got a few saves. So there's a few people out there who are following it, um, which is good to see. Um, yeah, I mean, since then it's you know we've done a few bits on our on our story and whatnot. Um, I probably held back a little bit from from going into into coaching others until um, you know I was qualified in myself and felt ready to take that step. Um, so I will with any luck, be a, a fully qualified personal trainer and strength and conditioning coach by February. Um, so a lot of what I'm doing probably up until now is, is nearly, you know, it's, it sounds strange to say, but kind of in anticipation of, of what I hope to do. Um, I think to some degree, um, and some people might, might resent me for it. Um, but, you know, you nearly find yourself starting to, to post, more in an in an informative kind of way uh you start to talk maybe a bit more about yourself your journey um telling the story and i've done a few posts like that where you know it might piss some people off it might have some people saying well who's you know who does this guy think he is um but i think you know it's it's nearly kind of preparatory stuff um it's me kind of opening myself up a little bit more about who I am, um, where my drive comes from. Um, and that's something that, that, that'll that build a basis for hopefully um, me kind of moving more into that area. Um, you know, I, I remember doing, a, I made a kind of a longer post talking about my um, my fitness journey and my, my kind of reasons behind it, um, citing specifically kind of my struggles with, uh, with growth hormone deficiency. Um, 
with you know connected uh, mental health kind of problems that came with it um that was i think february this year um and you know i was i can't remember kind of shitting it um before posting it i was just thinking this is something that uh i'm not sure that i'm ready for people to see or to to judge me on or you know it could go two ways um in one way there was you know the the kind of worry of um of vulnerability and of of telling people about how much i struggled with it which is you know something that i never did um that was one worry and the second was well if you post something that can be seen as this kind of like you know false motivational crap or or you know just another one of those posts that um you know people would nearly laugh it off and say you know who's mr you know billy big biceps uh as that's a quote that's that's <laughs> that's a quote from rob Lipset, by the way um oh, but brilliant. um but yeah you know what i mean like who does he think he is um but i got i got good feedback from it um i've had people kind of contact me on um would you believe on instagram um about either themselves or maybe their uh, their kids who are going through growth hormone treatment um, and about how to deal with that um, maybe mentally um, or maybe it's more about uh, you know um, logistical things or you know sometimes it's about well what does this mean for me or my kids playing sports or you know am I am I limited by this or, or how far can I go? And that's always something I am more than happy to kind of give advice on. Um, and as I said, that was, that was the start of this year and, and the odd time now I'll still get a message from someone um, asking about it. And for me, that, that means more than anything else, you know, um, it's, uh, it's kind of humbling in that sense to see that, uh, that people care about what I've kind of come out with Um and, you know, I think if it wasn't for that um, or me kind of taking the plunge with with opening myself up like that, I don't think I would have been maybe feeling ready to to move forward um, and to maybe keep posting uh, things fitness related. Um, but, yeah, I think one thing that that really hit home was, um, was actually during the summer. I was um, so I was at a fitness festival with, uh, you know, we, we met with Rob Lipset and, and a few others there. Um, as you as you alluded to earlier but um yeah i remember posting a video of um of me doing some sort of work out there and uh i got someone replying to it saying um you know you're my son's role model um and he's going through kind of his own growth hormone treatment at the minute and he wants to be kind of like you and you know it nearly feels weird to say this um so take it that i'm not i'm not calling a bluff here but that's that's a message that i got and that was that was quite powerful um for sure and i think that was was the only kind of validation i needed that no matter what others will or or might say to you for for kind of putting yourself out there as someone who can who can preach about fitness um if there's one person you can really change or one person you can influence or motivate um or inspire like that then then you're you're doing things right you know and that's not to say that that I've done anything huge since but I think that for me kind of showed that you know maybe there is um there is scope there for for me to go to go further into that um kind of digital kind of fitness sphere yeah that's a really powerful message for someone to come up and say they want to be just like you I mean that's that's not many people hear that so yeah that's something that's powerful. I think that that's something that makes can make you just completely overlook if you get any. I mean, I don't. I don't understand why you would get any criticism if you're trying to bring value to people's lives. Obviously, there are people out there that will just criticize because it's something different, something outside of the norm. It's someone who's trying to actually carve out a path for themselves, and some people just are offended and intimidated by that. But I think when you get messages like that from that guy it's, it's a clear indicator that you're bringing a lot of value to somebody's life and, it, and just just because not everybody's saying it to you it doesn't mean that you're not bringing massive value as you said you had that 
uh, post that had numerous saves on it. So just because people don't necessarily comment on it doesn't mean that you're not uh, bringing a lot of value to their life. And I think you're only going to get better with obviously your fitness knowledge. And then if you decide to pursue that route with content, your content's only going to improve as well. Absolutely. Um, what's okay? We're gonna we're gonna do one more one more question. Or what's your final message to anyone listening who's in fitness, thinking about getting into fitness, maybe is struggling with their perception of themselves and they think fitness might be the answer. What's your final take home point for them? Yeah. Um, what I would say is that fitness in itself, it's, it's possibly, possibly not the answer. If someone's really struggling with themselves, um, I think there's, there's a lot of um, introspection that perhaps needs to be done and, and look if things are, are, are really serious. I, I definitely would be one to preach, you know, you know, go and maybe get counseling, go and talk to someone if, you know, if you're really in a bad way. Um, but fitness can work hand in hand with that. Um, and, you know, I'd, you know, perhaps have been kind of hesitant to go about saying this before, but, you know, I, you know, been in, in counseling a number of, of times myself, um, and doing that hand in hand with, you know, that kind of fitness lifestyle does help. Um, keep keep doing what you're doing. Keep going the way you're going. If you can add one or two gym sessions into your week, if you can take up a sport and train once or twice a week, do it. Don't see it as as the, the goal, the be all, end all. But you'll find that, you know, if you add two or three hours into your week where you're dedicating your time to, to the betterment of yourself, um things fall into place um things fall into place a lot easier than they, than they would have before and and i know it sounds like rubbish uh it sounds completely inconceivable but fitness has such a a, a huge plethora of, of benefits to you um whether it's as you said discipline um which is sometimes seen as a maybe a negative word um you know i think particularly in this day and age, we, we talk a lot about being easy on ourselves, which is true. Um, and we absolutely need to be, um, but that shouldn't make discipline a taboo. Um, discipline isn't, isn't all about, you know, having a sergeant major shouting at you to do the right thing. Um, discipline can be, you know, being at ease with yourself um, taking accountability for yourself, but maintaining a good relationship with your demands and with your your own kind of um mental needs at the same time so so discipline is one thing but look so many people when they start into fitness um and they would never have considered it before they just find it to be it's just something they love and, and we can find something um find a hobby like that that you might not have discovered before and that in itself finding something to look forward to and something to kind of brighten up your week um if you have that baseline level of happiness and you're kind of pushing that up, even just a notch, um, you find that you start to perform better in other aspects of your life. So, you know, as, as, a, as a take-home message, um, all I can say is try it. Uh, take up a sport, um, walk into the gym, um, go with a friend uh, if you need to get a coach, um, but just try it. Give it a go, give it a month, um, maybe longer and don't focus on results uh focus on focus on your happiness focus on how your life's going as a whole um don't beat yourself up for miss missing a session don't beat yourself up if you know you're you're missing any kind of numbers targets that you have as difficult as that may be because they're you know kind of ancillary to to the main goal which is which is to enjoy yourself you know life's too short not to um but that being said, life is short. And particularly for those who are maybe, you know, of a student age, those in their 20s, um, you know, this is this is the time where you can really um, excite yourself with uh, with your capabilities when it comes to, you know, feats of strength or power or performance. Um, I think this is the perfect time to get into a sport, get into the gym, um, because it's when your body is going to be at its prime and not to see that as a pressure, but to see it as an opportunity. Um, this is the time where you can really excite yourself 
by your own abilities um, and abilities you thought you mightn't have. 